happy Friday night. Welcome to the Bowtie Treasures studio. I'm Aaron with Bowtie Treasures. Are you ready to go tonight? We've got something fun, maybe not simple, but I've done it before. Airbrushing with Dixie Bell products. If that's interesting to you, you're in the right place. All right, well, you know what? Let me show you what's going on. Uh, I had to kind of get set up ahead of time because with airbrushing, things can be a little squirrely. In other words, I didn't want to get set up and go, well, sorry guys, can't work, nothing to do tonight. But So I've already done some preliminary work, so I'll try to explain as much as I can on what I'm doing. I have a client's coffee table here. The goal to, for this coffee table, it's an Ethan Allen table. The top is in another part of the house is to kind of do all the things on it. And I had it on a different setup, but I, I'm like, I gotta figure out a way where I can do this on the live because I gotta do for all four legs. So I have my Lazy Susan underneath with a folding table on top of my Lazy Susan because it's so big, it's like 48 inches. Um, so anyways, that's the chaos that happens here in the Bowtie Treasure Studio. I have a airbrush that I purchased from Harbor Freight. I think it's Harbor Freight. They're not super expensive. They look pretty high techy. Let me get out of the way, but um, it's really not too hard. It's a little tricky to kind of master this, how much liquid and all that, but it comes with compressor, which is on the floor, has a nice little case. I'm not repping them or anything. I'm just telling you what I've done. And uh, so this is probably maybe the third or fourth time I've used the airbrush on furniture. To me, it really makes a really nice, soft stencil, as opposed to, let's say, a stencil brush or tapping, whatever. Some people use a foam applicator. Anyways, it's kind of nice to be fun, do some fun and fancy things with, with an airbrush. Uh, I'm not really demonstrating how I painted the piece. I've kind of done this technique on other things a little bit, a little bit of the dry brush. I did some shading down below, things like that. So. After I'm done with the airbrushing, I'm gonna see how it dries and I may do some layering over it. I really don't know. I'm just really, about every day I'm doing something else on it just to kind of build it up. Um, the client really wants something, you know, bow tie treasures and artistic, so we're going that direction. This product tonight, I'm gonna to be using Dixie Bell's Victorian Damask. I have a different, I think a Royal Damask is one of my favorite. In fact, I just ordered another one because I was wearing it out. But I'm gonna try this one. One of the things I like it's just a different pattern. So what I've decided is I'm going to use this little decorative piece right here. My camera wants to focus on me, but, and I thought it would be really great to kind of hit this corner and I'm going to do one corner at a time. So that's the plan. Before I get to that, in the airbrush, most of the time, probably out of the four out of five times that I've airbrushed, I've used Dixie Bell's Moonshine Metallics have kind of figured out that somewhere around 50-50 mix of water and moonshine metallics. I would probably say you're about the same way, maybe a little bit more water for chalk paint. I have done chalk paint, but, so this is my, I got a little just printer paper and I'm looking for just nice flow, consistency. If it's spitting out, you don't have something right, so you can see the spitting areas. You just want a nice mist. So let me show you what I'm talking about. And on, and on an airbrush, you have this little lever. Push it down and you pull it back as well. So while I'm spraying tonight, I'll be adjusting my finger on this knob. This is not a professional level sprayer. They get professionals, can, but you hear that? That's me pushing the button. Off in the distance, I don't know if you're gonna hear it with my lapel mic, but there's a compressor on the floor that this cable's attached to. So what I'm looking for, as I pull back, I'm trying to, you see how it started out kind of like um, just too much? Well, I don't want to start with my furniture on that, but so you might want to just slowly pull back as you, you're looking just for a nice mist, but you got to get paint on there. Right now it's not, there you go. See that? So if you hold it in one spot too long, you're gonna get kind of a almost a drip. You don't want that. You just wanna I just wanna mist, and that's looking pretty good right there. Okay. 
So I probably have about three quarters or half a bottle of, of mix there. I started out today, I wasn't getting anything. I added more water, sprayed a little bit longer, add a little bit more water, eventually you'll get there. But don't practice on your piece of furniture, right? That's, find something to spray on. And in fact, I was even spraying on a note sheet earlier. I said, I need something bigger. Okay, so let's get let's give it a try. Again, I, I, I can even practice Let's see if we can practice on this paper. Just not that I feel like I need it, but demonstrate how you might practice, okay? And let's see if, before I go and ruin the world. So this is this section right here, a little washed out. Let's see if I can adjust the lighting for you all. Oh, there we go. So we're gonna be right in here. And you need to, you can practice on how close to get. You don't want to get super close because you're going to get too much spray and it's just going to water up. See how I'm moving my hand around in circles? There you go. So that's, this is the new, I don't know if my camera wanted to focus on that. It's struggling because it's shiny, I think, but did a nice job. It's a little soft. Part of that's because the stencil wasn't all the way flat. So some places are crisper than others. At this point, I'm not really looking for a super crisp edge. I am looking for just a nice, a nice soft pattern. Now, the good thing is nothing's going wrong in the back. I'm going to kind of use this tape as a just keep it on on the table if it can hold the weight up i think i can keep the pressure so i think that's going to work because i want to keep this close enough that's not too far lifted okay let's go keep my paper handy on the right make sure i'm actually getting paint pull back on the trigger a little bit I don't think I'm gonna see the stencil much, and that's okay. Getting on my finger. Let's see how we did. I need to get a rag because I'm spraying on my finger at the same time. So I'm gonna lift this up and take a look. Boom. I didn't get all the way to the edge, but I think I'll, I'll live with that. It's looking, it, it just looks right. It's not super pure. It's got a little bit of transparency to it. It doesn't look like I stenciled it on. There's some thicker areas and thinner areas. And um, I want this to look a little bit imperfect. Not super imperfect, does that make sense? Okay, this is where the Lazy Susan is gonna allow me to stay on the, on the same same location each time for some reason like i said i wasn't all the way to the edge i'm gonna try and keep an eye on that amazon okay so here we go i'm gonna push get going back again i may have to um let me do it real quick i'm gonna go ahead and just dab some of the extra because it's really wet there's a lot of water in there i'm gonna wipe off a little extra here we go let me see if I can just pull you guys in a little bit more. Make sure you can see what I'm doing. Okay, so again, my finger's gonna pull back to release that. I'm going in circles just so it's kind of slowly doing the job. And that's it. Take another look. That's how fast. I mean, you can't do that with a stencil brush. I don't use my airbrush a lot. I probably could use it a lot more, but to have a, a nice tool that maybe you could do, if you do a lot of stenciling, you like this kind of color or product, this, this could, and I have found it's not hard to clean. You just I usually just airbrush water through it Okay, we're doing all the same angles, so let's keep going. I'm 
We're pushing a lot of air, a lot of paint, not a lot of paint, but a lot of air through. I do need to keep an eye on to make sure I'm not, it's not, we don't want dripping wet paint. But you're gonna find that when you do this, it's almost kind of like a mist. better to have a flatter surface so it is creating a softer stencil edge but again nobody's staring at this thing really close so I'm gonna give you guys a little bit so this will be more of a, a distant side view angle same technique just a we're now on the other side of the leg make sure my brush still okay we're doing great let me paint It. What do y'all think of the echoing pattern? how it looks symmetrically. So like I said, I, I did dry brushing underneath. I also did some, Shade. the other side's fine. It actually is a little bit more transparent. Look, look, isn't that cool how this, the lighting catches that? And then sometimes it just, like right there, it disappears. That's the beauty of the Moonshine Metallic. It's nice and true, uh, it's shiny, and it's also thin enough to not be, um, super super thick and um, to me that's all that, that's all a win some next steps that I'm again I'm still kind of just feeling this piece out I might do some faux distressing but right now I've been taking it one step at a time just to see what this piece needs and because a really good airbrush um, you should you see how it just blasted out that's not good a really good airbrusher should be able to like do a fine thin line like a, a hairline of paint <laughs> not that and uh, I've not been able to perfect that nor am I trying to so this is the kind of thing that you want to practice this is just not a fine delicate machine I can guarantee you that professional airbrushers would probably tell you this sprayer is a joke, but for what I'm doing for craft and for spraying chalk paint, it's, it's, it's a good tool. Some other things that I could do, I could use the airbrusher to do some just spraying of metallics to kind of dust it, but the stencil was really what I was after. So like I said, the only thing that I need to do now is empty, I'll go rinse this out, put water in, and just spray water. Probably some warm water, that'll get the paint out of the system. That's about all I do to clean it. And so far, that's worked really well for me. Um, anyways, that was my life, short and sweet tonight, but I thought I'd showcase the airbrush tonight. Haven't done that in a while. So glad you joined us tonight. If you're watching a replay, let me know. If you haven't done so yet, subscribe. It really helps a lot. And um, use, there are links on my website, bowtietreasures.com, where you can see Dixie Bell's link, Would You Bend link, or even my Amazon shop where you can see other products. If you have any more questions, let me know. Until next time, we'll see you guys later. Take care. That's the end of the show. Make sure you subscribe and ring the bell before you go. Bye.